Good morning everybody and welcome back to Lisa's Coloring Corner. Today I wanted to do, excuse me, I had to open my soda. Today I wanted to do one last color and chat for the month of February for Sun Life Drawing Month. And so I thought we would color out of this animals one color dots. I'm not sure if I colored out of this for this month. I think I maybe did one. Um, not sure because I did so many Sun Life drawing <laughs> pictures. So I thought we would color out of here. And it may take a while. I'm not sure if I will get this all done this morning yet. It is early on Wednesday morning. I just got done doing the 500 subscriber giveaway, so I thought as long as I had everything set up for recording anyhow, I would go ahead and at least start this color and chat. If I do not get it done, I think rather than starting a part two, I'm just going to pause the video and either uh, finish it up tonight or tomorrow morning. Okay, so I have just been kind of doing these in order. You can see I have, well, except for that one, but you can see I've colored quite a few in here. I just colored this one last night, and it is a clownfish. So that is a Finding Nemo picture. <laughs> So I thought we would just go on to the next picture. And I already picked out from my set of gel pens. And again, I am using the Color Technique uh, glitter gel pens. This is the set of 80. I will link them down below as well as the refills. They also have um, a smaller pack I can't remember off the top of my head whether it's a set of 40 or 50 with uh, refills available also. I'll just link all that down below and I will also link this particular book down below in the description. So let's go ahead and get going. Let me zoom you in a little bit. Okay, let me move this camera over a little so I can stay in frame a little bit better. And hopefully I'll do a better job today than I have been. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started. How is everybody doing today? I am doing well. We are getting yet more snow, and then Friday, we are supposed to get some more. So it's like, it just is never ending. I went outside and I recorded just a little clip of what it looks like currently up here at my house. And I think what I'm going to do is as long as I'm talking about it right now, I think I will go ahead and insert that clip now just so you can kind of see what it looks like around here. As I state in this video, the little clip I'm going to insert, um, I know other places of the country probably look worse than it is here even. And I know that up by my daughter, who is an hour north of me, they got this last storm, we got close to a foot of snow. And it was technically a blizzard because we had such high winds with it. But, uh, yeah, we got almost a foot. They, up north, got close to 18 to 20 inches of snow. So they got hit much harder up north than what we did. So I think I will insert that clip right here. And then we'll come back and we will color some more. Be right back. 
Okay, I had recorded this earlier and was going to insert the clip, but it wasn't very light out. You can see much better now. Again, this is the amount of snow we have here in central Wisconsin. There's the church and the big play area I have talked about in the past, where kids go sledding and play baseball in the summer, fly their kites. The churches are the church is there. There's a school there. And yeah, this is all the snow that we have. The car that we bought for me. It's kind of buried. I don't know if you can see that all. Bob got it unburied a little bit, but the driver's window has to be fixed yet. The motor has to be replaced because it doesn't go up and down. But this is what it looks like around here. And again, I know <laughs> other parts of the country are probably worse than this. I know Heather up north an hour north of us got quite a bit more snow than us. You normally can see, now that it's done snowing, you can see way to the north. You can see the view, the beautiful view I have way up here on top of the hill. I love that. That house, I don't know, shouldn't be two-story. It's in my way. <laughs> but I love the fact they can never build across the street here, so won't have any houses to block my view. But yeah, this is what it looks like around here. Lots and lots of snow. So I thought, eh, maybe you guys, especially in the south, would like to see this. The kids love it. But us grown-ups, not necessarily. So I'm going to insert this little clip. Like I mentioned in my color and chat, I will insert it and just let you guys see what it looks like here. So I'll get back to you and we'll see you back at the color and chat. Bye. Okay, I am back. Did you enjoy seeing the snow? Again, <laughs> in particular for you guys down in the south who don't normally see snow. We have the highest snow banks, and I don't know because it's just so white out there if you can really truly see the height of the banks, but I don't remember the snow banks ever being this high here in town. And as a matter of fact, for the very first time since I have moved in this house in 2009, we had the big snow plow, which is usually a construction grader, but in the winter time they put on this huge V plow in the front. And they typically don't come into towns and cities because they are so huge. Well, he came through like four times yesterday and plowed everything up out of the streets to widen the streets. I'm assuming all over Marathon. Um, because, you know, we were getting more snow today and more snow on Friday. The streets were getting narrower and narrower because the City plow can only plow so much. They don't have the power that those great big snow plows have. So it was rather interesting seeing that great big thing come through town. <laughs> it was kind of fun to watch how that thing plowed the snow all the way up into the yards, all the way over the sidewalks. So thank heavens, our town, and I know in particular Edgar, which is just a few miles west of us, it had mentioned on the news that we are not to shovel our sidewalks. It's like, huh, music to our ears, because even we here, Bob had no idea how he was going to get those sidewalks 
back open again after the last storm. I mean, it was snow drifted shut so high that, yeah, it would have been extremely hard to get those sidewalks back open. So when we heard that we were not supposed to be shoveling our sidewalks, it's like, yes. Amen. They didn't want the snow that you're snow blowing or shoveling. Hopefully snow blowing. They did not want that stuff out in the streets. And they also knew that if we blew it the other way into our yards, there was nowhere to go with it. If you blew it up over the top of what was already there, it just fell back down. <laughs> And uh, so, yeah, would have been a little peeved if we would have, I say we, Bob, <laughs> would have got the sidewalks open and had taken all the time to dig out those sidewalks. And then the big plow came through yesterday and would have completely closed them back down. <laughs> Closed them back up, closed them back down. I guess closed them back up. <laughs> Filled them with snow. How about that? So, yeah, that, that was good news. And we do not have to shovel our sidewalks or snow blow the sidewalks for the rest of the winter. And we are to just leave them go and let them melt in the spring but then like they mentioned on the news you're gonna have to be very aware of people walking in the streets then because they can't use the sidewalks and in particular around the schools now that church that i shown in the clip to the south of there is the Catholic school. So they typically use the sidewalk that is right across from me. The kids that are in town and walk to school, many of them use that sidewalk. So now they're not going to be able to and will be walking in the street. And this 8th Street that I live on is very busy. And sometimes they zip through here quite fast. So all those people better be aware that not only other people, especially those that walk their dogs a lot up here, but all the other people and then especially the school kids will be walking up here so they better slow down and keep a close eye out for them so it's it's going to be interesting the rest of the winter up here because there will be no sidewalks <laughs> And the poor guy, I had mentioned in a past video how the individual that takes care of all of the groundskeeping for the school and the church across the way, he had one time come and blew out the other, the end of our driveway when it was plowed shut, which I thought was so awesome of him. Well, he went along the whole entire sidewalk across the street and snow blew all the snow off the sidewalk. Took him quite a while to do because there was a lot of snow there. And I'm imagining that he did do it for the kids, the school kids. And then the big snowplow comes through yesterday and just closed it all up again. <laughs> so he must not have been told. He was not aware of the fact that they were going to be coming through and doing that. And here he spent all that time snow blowing 
to get that sidewalk open for the kids. Well, for everybody. Like I said, it's kind of dog walk central up here. And uh, was probably opening it up for that too. It is, like I said, a, a busy street and there's a lot of people that walk by. And so it was nice that he did that, but yeah, kind of did it for nothing. Poor guy. Probably went out and seen that this morning and he's like, oh, sure. Could have told me they were doing that. How has the weather been in other parts of the country? Like I said, I know it has not been just isolated here to Wisconsin. The weather has been just awful everywhere, whether it be tons of rain in the south or out west, like in California. But then so much snow in other parts of the country. And some places that just typically do not get snow at all. I can't remember where it was. They showed it on TV. These kids that were just jumping for joy. It was a bunch of school kids. And they must have been out maybe in the playground or... And they, yeah, they were just jumping for joy and were so excited to see snow coming down. And it's like, yeah, you be excited. <laughs> but I can imagine if you have never seen snow, have never gotten to play in the snow as a child, that would be pretty exciting. We here who have grown up with it, however, as a kid, yeah, it was fun. You were you were hoping for lots of snow in the winter because it was lots of fun to go out and play in it. And I have talked in past videos about how we would go back behind the barn where the wind really whipped and these snow drifts in the field back there would be as high as us of course we were kids back then but still probably some of it was higher than us and we would dig tunnels in the snow because it was all really hard snow with being whipped around from the wind and oh yeah we spent hours playing outside so yeah kids enjoy the snow whether it be just playing in the snow or sledding, ice skating. We have a, it's not too far from here. It's a big, um, not toboggan run, but they go down on inner tubes. And it's called Sylvan Hill. And sometimes some of the schools do um, class trips out to Sylvan Hill and yeah you you get an inner tube and uh, you go to the top of the hill and you slide down on these inner tubes down to the bottom and I've never been there myself I've seen it on TV and yeah it looks like a good time <laughs> I think I would actually even enjoy that if I had warm enough clothes to dress up in because you know me I hate being cold it was quite chilly out yet this morning we were still well almost below zero and now after Friday's snow into Saturday by Sunday and Monday we're supposed to be way below zero again with highs during the day just in the single digits. And by now, 
even in February, our high is supposed to be in the 30s. So it's like we are nowhere near our norm. So not only has it been an extraordinarily snowy winter, and we have broken so many records, but it has also been a very cold winter, and we broke a record or two for that too. This really reminds me of the winter that we had maybe like five years ago or so, where then too, we broke not only snowfall records, but also cold records. It was very cold that winter too. So yeah, anytime you break a snow record alone, that's one thing, but when you break the snow record and the cold temp record, you know it's a bad winter. And when fall comes, September, October, even into November, you're wondering, okay, what is this winter going to be like? And when winter started out, it was like, mm, didn't seem like it was going to be too bad. November was quite cold, but other than that, we hadn't gotten much snow. We hardly had a thing on the ground for Christmas. It was pretty much what we call a brown Christmas when there's no snow on the ground. But yeah, Mother Nature, uh, even in January, we didn't get much. And Mother Nature decided to make up for that in the month of February. We are now way above our normal snowfall that we get for the entire winter. And we got almost every single bit of it this past month. So here's hoping with March starting the end of the week that March will be much better. I don't know if we get much more snow, truly, where it is going to go. I know many of the cities, most of them, in fact, if not all of them, are having front end loaders coming in and removing snow, especially off the main streets, because it's getting to be a real hazard. Even up here, when I back out of the driveway, because I am parked in the garage, and you get down to the end of the driveway and you stop to see if there's any traffic coming, you can't see because the snow uh, banks are blocking your view. So you're backed out halfway into the street before you can truly see if anybody's coming. So. I hope everybody is aware of that and is on the lookout for anybody that is backing out of their driveway because they should be aware that people are having to back out into the street before they can see anything. That's one of the things I really hate about these tall snowbanks at the end of everybody's driveway. Is, and it's not just the driveways, it's all the streets in town, even in Wassa. It's hard to see sometimes when you're at a stop sign if any traffic is coming. So it can be kind of dangerous sometimes. Weather, 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 and so it seems that's all I talk about. That's why I thought I would go out <laughs> and record that little clip of what it looks like around here, up at my neck of the woods. So, yeah, 
I guess things could be worse. I'm just hoping we have a very slow melt in spring. Because if we don't, we are going to have some massive flooding around again. And we have down near the bottom of the hill, that's of course very low-lying land, and that's where the river is that comes through town. And so that can flood quite easily. That's low-lying land down there, and there are houses down there. And so they can get flooded quite easily down there. There have been a number of places that have pretty much been ruined. I know there was one mobile home. Those people moved, and they had to demolish the mobile home because it was just, it was beyond repair. So I'm glad I live up here and not down by the river because that thing does periodically flood over its banks and sometimes it can really get flooded especially when we have a lot of water coming down from the north it comes down that it's called rib river and so even if we don't get a ton of rain here if they get slammed with rain up north we could still potentially get flooding here because of course it moves on down the river and then hits here and then on and on and on as it moves south so and I'm sure everybody around would have the same problem Not fun. Water damage is just something that is so hard to deal with because it just ruins absolutely everything. And then you have mold problems and it's very expensive cleanup, I can imagine. I have not, thank heavens, had to deal with it here. But I cannot begin to imagine, especially if you stored a lot of things in your basement like I do, you know, how everything would just get ruined down there. And I mean, I have already seen pictures and I'm sure you have too of where water would come up to the main level so not only are the things down in the basement getting ruined, but all the woodwork in your house, the frame and everything is getting soaked with water even up on your first floor and ruining, you know, carpeting and, you know, absolutely everything, probably even at some point appliances and anything electrical so yeah i i cannot begin to imagine what a massive cleanup that would be when we had the flooding in southern wisconsin this past summer and it would show on TV what some of these poor people were having to go through with the flooding. And I know I've mentioned in the past when Bob had his esophageal cancer surgery last August is when a lot of the flooding down in the southern part of the state was happening. And many of the streets were closed, especially the ones on the side of Madison where the UW Hospital is because of, there's a big lake on that side. 
which was flooding. So in turn, it flooded a lot of the streets. So we had to find alternate routes to get to the hospital and because the streets were all closed and yeah. And I'm sure that is nothing like the flooding that happens in the southern states, especially with all the hurricanes and things like that that have happened in the past. That's, that's another scenario I just cannot imagine having to go through. So we may get our snow up here, but I know it could be worse. We have been very lucky in regard to tornadoes up here, knock on wood. We uh, have gotten some, of course, but nothing too damaging, nothing real close in my area. I know there have been some devastating tornadoes, again, in some of the southern states. And even with this last huge storm system that came through the country, I know that there were tornadoes in the southern states, which to me just sounds so bizarre to have tornadoes in February. Is that a common occurrence, anybody that lives in the south, to have tornadoes in the winter months? I mean, yes, I know it is warmer down there, but I didn't know if that typically occurred. I couldn't remember in other years if there were tornadoes in the winter months. Just seems so odd for us up here when we're so cold with all this snow to think of tornadoes. I hope I'm close enough for you guys. I didn't want to zoom in too close because then it is harder for me to stay on screen as you could tell from past videos I was having a hard time <laughs> these past couple videos that I've done have just been horrendous and I apologize especially if it was a picture that I moved around a lot to color oh wow yeah, I was having problems. Had to have been very aggravating for those of you that were watching. I am hoping the majority of you were just coloring too and not watching me struggle to stay on screen. <laughs> oh, my heavens. The struggle is real. Figured by now, after having my YouTube channel up for, it's been almost two months now, so I'm still a newbie. I'm still learning, but I kind of thought by now I'd be able to stay on screen better. But yeah, it's something to do yet with it looking backwards. Well, I shouldn't say backwards, but it is kind of like sideways on my iPad, and it's just a little bitty viewer. It doesn't fill up the entire screen, which I wish it would. That would help tremendously, but when I am using this app to transmit the screen from my phone to the iPad it it does you know show what's showing in my phone so I can see what the phone is recording but yeah it's just it shows it relatively small on the iPad still gives me an idea of where I'm at though so it is better than nothing 
because the first few videos that I did, I was trying to look up and see in my phone screen whether I was on screen or not. And it was getting to be very hard to do because I don't have my phone off to the side. I have it up here directly above me. So it was, yeah, it was kind of difficult to look and see if I was out of frame or not. So I'm like, there's got to be something better than this. And seeing as how I do have the iPad, I figured there had to have been something out there where you'd be able to connect two Apple products, the iPhone and the iPad, together somehow. And there is. Voila. It's amazing what a Google search can do. <laughs> you can Google anything and everything. And if you don't find it there, you search YouTube. Because they say YouTube is the second largest search engine after Google. So, yeah. YouTube has seen so slow lately. Has anybody else had that problem? I don't know if it's the amount of traffic on YouTube lately takes me once in a while it will pop up right away but then other times like this morning it took a while for YouTube to come up and even uploading my videos to YouTube and I believe I heard other colorists say this too that it was taking a long time to upload their videos to YouTube. The one video I uploaded earlier this week, I can't remember which one it was. I think it was about an hour and a half video. And I forgot how many hours it was taking for that video to upload. It was just hours upon hours upon hours. And so I finally went to bed and I just let it run and it finally completed, but I mean, it was probably a good, boy, I can't even remember, like eight to 10 hours. It was ridiculous. Normally it only takes a couple hours for me to upload here. That is of course after saving, you know, the video getting it into the editing program, saving it there, making the thumbnail. It's all a, a process, but I enjoy making these. And so it doesn't bother me. The only time I get a little antsy is if it is a video that I do want up the same day and I would like it up for one reason or another as soon as possible. Then I get a little antsy. And it's like, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. As fast as internets are nowadays, they're never fast enough, right? I have charter for my internet provider, and it is very fast. I do have to say, it is a fast internet. But sometimes it just, it seems like it slows down to a crawl. And again, I don't know if it's just traffic on the internet. I'll blame the weather for that too. <laughs> <laughs> blame everything on the weather. But I would imagine weather could possibly play a part in some of the things. I don't know if it has anything to do with the internet speed, but sounds like a good scapegoat to me. It's 
So this may be a long color and chat. Or technically, I guess this is yet a color along because it is for Sun Life Drawing Month yet. Does anybody have this particular book? And if so, are you coloring out of it along with me? I have heard from a number of you that have purchased some of the Sun Life Drawing books and I have an exciting announcement to make that uh, Sun Life Drawing, the individual that I am in contact with, told me yesterday that their next book will be coming out shortly. Um, they have been working, I guess, on this next book for quite a while. And it's going to be quite different than these types of books. They have been working on it, I guess, for months. And they are finally done with the book. And they are just creating the colorized cover of the book. So they are hoping to have it out in a couple of weeks. And... Let's see, he said the name of it is World of Animals, and what it is going to be, the description that he gave me is it will be a detailed classic coloring book with animal families in the human world. So, what that exactly all means or what it's going to look like, I'm not real sure. I'm quite curious. And he offered to sponsor another giveaway for my channel. Yay! So, he will be, or I will be, we both will be, <laughs> giving away a copy of their new book once it is out. So, stay tuned for that giveaway, another Sun Life Drawing giveaway. They have been so generous to me, and I appreciate it so much. I, I told them that. I said, you have just been awesome to me, you know, letting me do these giveaways, and because of the fact that they're sent directly from Sun Life Drawing, I can open up the giveaway to international subscribers, which I love doing because I hate excluding my international viewers from giveaways. But, you know, sometimes it is just a necessity because shipping overseas, as you know, is just so atrociously expensive. I mean, it definitely costs more to ship the items than the items are worth <laughs> in most cases. Especially if it's coloring books and supplies. That definitely is the case, so... There will be times, as you are well aware, not just my channel, but all channels, that unfortunately the giveaways are just for the United States. But the comments that I got from you international subscribers were just all so wonderful. You totally understand why many of the giveaways are just in the United States. I have wonderful subscribers. I thank each and every one of you for subscribing to my channel. The comments that I get on every one of my videos are always so positive and I just love reading them all. And I do read all the comments, and I do reply 
to all of you. Or at least I believe I do. If I see your comment, I do comment back. Now it may take me a day or two. And I know other subscribers who have a lot more subscribers than me try to also comment back and uh, reply to everybody that has commented. But it, of course, takes them longer because they have, you know, some of those that have thousands of subscribers get a lot more comments than I do. And I can imagine it takes a while to get through all of them. Especially when you're busy with your everyday life and you're busy making additional videos. It uh, gets hard to keep up with all of that. And then if you have a full-time job on top of that, whether it's out of the home or in home, Yeah, makes it that much harder. Now, I, again, I don't work outside the home, but I am, well, not a full-time grandma, but a half-time grandma. <laughs> Where I do have, you know, Maddie all day and then Jaden part of the day. So, yeah, I can't do anything during the week much either. Very rarely have I recorded something at night after they have left because mm, I'm just a little burnt out and tired. <laughs> I know. Many of you are probably the exact same way after working all day at your job. So, I totally understand. Really need a clock in here. I've said that time and time again, and so last Friday when I got groceries at Walmart, I had looked up ahead of time, and yeah, they got these really cheap clocks for like five bucks, these wall clocks, and I want to put one up on the wall over here so I can glance up and immediately see what time it is. Because as I'm recording, it does not show on my screen what time it is like it normally does. It just shows me how long I've been recording, which I do need to know also. And it's not quite so important, I guess, what time it is when I record on Fridays or on the weekends, but when I record like this in the morning before Maddie gets here, yeah, I kind of need to know what time it is. I just kind of keep an ear out for the TV in the other room. And when a certain program comes on, I kind of know <laughs> what time it is. And when I hear the church bells go off, I know it's 8. <laughs> so one way or another, I kind of know what time it is. But yeah, it would just be handier having a clock in here. So I have to remember when I get groceries this week, I have to get my little wall clock. Now, I don't know. I might have to get groceries, take my shower and get groceries earlier this Friday because we are supposed to get that next. Well, it's not going to be a big snowstorm or anything. We're supposed to get, I think, two to four inches, but that's always just enough to make things slippery. So I think I will go into town earlier than normal. Typically I go into town after lunch. I'll record a video or two in the morning, eat lunch, then take my shower and get into town and do my errands. 
I also forgot to stop. I was going to stop at the Dollar Tree. Maddie has been loving watching these videos where they play with Play-Doh. <laughs> and believe me, there are a ton of those videos out there where they will make different shapes. You know, they have different molds to mold the Play-Doh into this, that, and the other thing. And I thought, oh, she, she likes watching that. I bet you she would love to play with Play-Doh herself. So I know Dollar Tree has those really small, I mean, I know they're small, small cans, but of the different colors of Play-Doh. And I thought, oh, that would be enough for her. I would definitely have to keep her in the dining room because I know she would be dropping Play-Doh all over the place on the floor and I don't want that in my carpet. Even though I do have a big area carpet, rug, what have you, underneath the coffee table by the couch, I don't want it stuck in there either. And then if it gets stepped on, and oh yeah. I remember that from when my kids were little. How much of a mess Play-Doh can make, so... I thought if I keep her in the dining room at that table, things would maybe be a little easier. Okay, this is kind of how I do my circle dot pictures. I kind of go over just to a point and I'll do kind of like a column down and then I'll go back up to the top, especially when I'm doing excuse me, the very first part of it, because it's a little bit harder getting, you know, in by the binding here. So, yeah, I'm glad when that first column is done. <laughs> okay, so let's start back up here. It is, like I said, early in the morning, so I do have a light on up here so I hope that that is sufficient lighting it is getting lighter outside now though so as it gets lighter out there I can maybe turn this light back off I don't know doesn't look too bad when I look at it in my iPad um, because this is a glitter gel pen but it doesn't look like it's shining too bright shimmering from my desk light so I hope that is the case and you're able to see this all like I said I imagine you guys are not watching me color every one of these little circles and if you are I feel sorry for you <laughs> I wouldn't want to do it I wouldn't want to watch me do this I just color and listen. I love everybody's color in the chats. I was watching Anne this morning. She was showing her end of the month what she colored in February. And I do want to get that video created shortly as well as I have gotten quite a number of coloring books in the month of February. I know, such a shock. <laughs> so I do want to show my February book haul. So those are two videos I do want to get done as soon as possible, seeing as how we are winding down the month. And then I did get my first video recorded on diamond painting. And I should be having that one up in a little bit. And Friday or Saturday, I'm not quite sure. Depends upon when I get these other videos made. 
but I do want to do part two of that little diamond painting mini series. The first one was just, you know, the basics. What is diamond painting? What are some additional tools you can purchase? Not necessary, but because you get everything with your kit that you really need to do it. But just some things that can make diamond painting go a little faster, make things just a little bit easier to do. So then this next part, I want to show how I set up a diamond painting and then hopefully do a diamond painting in chat. I know Anne has started doing those. And I had been planning on doing one too, so I hope to get to one of those shortly. In the diamond painting world, we call them drill with me's because Typically, like when we have our colorant chats, we are kind of assuming that most of you are coloring along with us as we are coloring and you're just kind of listening. Well, the same is true with the Drill With Me videos in that they are doing their diamond painting and you are doing your diamond painting. And you're just kind of listening to them jabber on and on and on. <laughs> like I do. So yeah, they're fun too. I have not been getting to my diamond painting much at all lately. And I feel so bad about that. I should have my huge waterfall picture done already but I have to save up some money to get that one framed because it is the only diamond painting that I have done that I am getting professionally framed and so it's not going to be you know something cheap some you know 30 to 50 dollar framing it is probably going to be a couple hundred dollars, so I have to save up a bit for that. Hoping to maybe use some of my tax return for that. Or at least, you know, be able to pay for half of it. I don't spend everything on coloring supplies, right? It's just so tempting. And then you watch these other videos where they're showing books that they got or what they're coloring out of. And you're like, oh, that is so pretty. Boom, there it goes on the wish list. See, everybody else's wish list grow by leaps and bounds like mine, especially when you are watching these coloring book hauls and their collection videos. It's like, oh, wow. Oh, that one looks pretty. Oh, that one looks pretty. So dangerous watching those videos. I had the same comment from many of you when you watched my seven-part series of my coloring book collection that I was bad for your credit card and your wish list grew and <laughs> all kinds of funny comments and I'm like I'm sorry same thing happens to me we are all such enablers to each other this YouTube can really be dangerous, can it? But as somebody told me, one of you subscribers, it could be worse. There could be a worse addiction than coloring. And isn't that the truth? 
You know, a person could be addicted to drugs. A person could be addicted to gambling. And other things that would be much more expensive than our coloring addiction. <laughs> and I do believe it is an addiction. I think for me, it's just as exciting collecting the things, the books, the coloring supplies, as it is to actually do the coloring. I mean, I love them both. I love organizing everything. As you could tell with my past videos, I'm a little OCD about things. My color charts in particular. I did ask, I believe, in my real recent video that I put up how I color a mandala. But I will ask it again because I don't think I got any replies back. I am receiving on Friday the 168 set of the Limoche uh, alcohol markers. And due to the amount of markers that there are in that set, I was just wondering if you would be interested in me creating a swatch, a swatching out video of those markers. Or if I should just swatch them out on my own and then just come back with a short video showing you guys the markers, showing you my swatch chart. I know many people like swatching videos and that's why I'm asking. I know I like swatching videos. I love it when people swatch out new markers or pencils or what have you. So that's why I'm asking if you could please let me know down in the comments. Because like I said, I'm getting those on Friday. And if you would like to see that, I would like to create that video then on Saturday. And probably put it up sometime next week. So yes, please let me know down in the comments below. Hey, that rhymed. Like I said, I didn't get a response from anybody in the How I Color a Mandala video. And I believe, if I remember right, I'm pretty sure I had asked in that video too. And it is a newer video. I mean, I've only had it out there a few days, so I don't know how many views it actually has yet. So I may get some responses to that question in that video too, but I just thought I would bring it up again because I do want to have this first part if it, well, I don't, like I said, I would prefer this particular video not to go into multiple parts because February is drawing to an end. So I really would like to just keep this as a one part video, even though it will probably be a longer color and chat. But I know some of you like that, too. I know that's another type of video I do like. I like the long color and chats. You just turn on that video and you get out whatever you are coloring and you listen to us blabber on and on <laughs> about whatever pops into our little heads. And you can just color your picture. I love doing that. I love Anne's long three-hour color and chats. She is such a hoot. I get such a kick out of her. 
Okay, let's switch it up. That's what I kind of do sometimes. I'll go this way for a while, and then I'll go this way, and then I'll go straight up and down. It's kind of what I do in diamond painting, too. I'll go across for a while, and then I'll go up and down for a while. Take a drink here. I was going to say a swig. That doesn't sound too good early in the morning, does it? Don't think that would wake me up in the morning. It would put me to sleep. I don't think I have anything here to drink in the first place. I do not keep any alcohol around. I very rarely drink anymore. Did enough of it in my younger days, but don't really do that anymore. Don't go to the bars. Um, I will drink some. I think the last time I drank was at my son's wedding which was over two years ago. But I have nothing against drinking. Like I said, I, I drank enough in my day, too. Bob and I used to go out to the bars every weekend, you typically Friday nights for a few hours and he does not drink at all. He has not drank since before I met him. So, and then he quit smoking shortly after I met him too. And he just went cold turkey. He just decided, of course he was having some health problems at that time too. And nothing serious, but, and uh, that's what prompted him to quit cold turkey. And every time he really craved a cigarette, because for him, you know what he did? And this is something I would not be able to do. He had to keep a pack of cigarettes in. He always has to have a, a shirt on with a pocket in because he always has, you know, a pocket protector with pens in and his little flashlight. And so in the other pocket, he would have to keep, and I don't know how long he did this, but he kept a pack of cigarettes in his other pocket with, I don't know if it was one or a couple cigarettes in. And I'm like, how did you not, you know, that would just be too tempting to me. How did you not grab those cigarettes out and smoke them when you really wanted them? And he said for him, that is what helped him. And you would think it would have been the opposite. So, yeah, he, I think he only smoked maybe a year after, for about a year after we met, and we have been going out for, let's see, 14 years now. Yes, 14 years. Matter of fact, our anniversary, if you want to call it that, is coming up in a couple of weeks because it is March 11th when we met and yes we met in a bar <laughs> here in town <sighs> how many out there have met people whether it's your spouse or not maybe it was something in the past um met a boyfriend or you know, things like that. Did you meet him in a bar? You hear that happening quite a bit. 
Although nowadays with all these apps out here that you can connect with uh, people with your profile you put on and you see if you're a match or not. I told Bob the other day, I said, there are so many of those apps out now. I said, does anybody ever meet the normal way anymore? Normal being either by chance or setting up a blind date from a friend or <laughs> meeting in bars or just coming across somebody that, you know, was just a chance meeting, maybe in a store or something. And, you know, just the normal way uh, people start to date. Now it just seems everything is on these apps. You want to know so much about the other person before you even meet. Which, in itself, I guess is okay. You can see if you have things in common and see what they look like. Although, looks are not everything. If the person has a great personality and you guys click that way, well, what a person looks like should not matter. So, I mean, there's good and bads to everything. And so I see that a lot, don't I? And so is that a Northern dialect? Thing to say just like you guys in the south say y'all <laughs> oh, too funny we all have our different sayings across the country don't we our different accents I find it so funny when I get a comment from a viewer that says, I love your accent. And I'm like, I don't have an accent. <laughs> Other people have accents. I don't have an accent. People from the South really have an accent. People from the East a lot of times have an accent. <laughs> I don't have an accent. I love the accent from the UK, the British accent. I just, I love how that sounds. I think it sounds so neat. So I'm sure those individuals really think we have an accent over here. I just find it so interesting how different parts of the world, even though they speak English, or even within our own country, how we all talk differently. You know, some, some is very similar, but the accents that we put on words I heard that we up in the north really uh, draw out our vowels. And I guess when I think about it, I guess we do. <laughs> and we can have a tendency of talking quite fast. So when I am recording, I do try to remember to not talk fast. I do talk slower because I don't well I'm not a real fast talker anyhow but I am not real loud either so I hope that when I am talking it comes across okay I have a rather low softer voice not always <laughs> Just ask Maddie. <laughs> it's not always soft. 
but for the most part. So yeah, I I hope that my mic picks me up okay, even when I'm talking quieter. Okay, we are maybe, what, halfway done, and it's been uh, a little over an hour. Oh, that's not too bad. The one that I did last night, I meant to really time myself to see how long it took me to do this one. And I kind of forgot. I had an idea because I knew I started it around 7 after... Maddie and Jaden were picked up, and it took probably about three hours, but that is taking into consideration doing a few things, too. So, kind of figured it was going to be under three hours, like maybe two and a half, and... That's probably what it's going to end up being between two and two and a half. We'll see if I can jabber on that long. <laughs> if I run out of things to talk about. Anybody have anything interesting in the news by you guys? Now, when I say you guys, I do mean everybody. Just a saying. I always say you guys. Guys and gals. I know I have many more female subscribers than I have male. I do believe I have a few male subscribers. but, And I think it's awesome that more and more men... Are getting into the coloring world not too long ago you probably seen very few guys that were into coloring and now you're seeing more and more some of whom also have YouTube channels like John and Dev John from the Bibliophile Colorist and Dev from, oh, I just had the name of his channel on the top. I just had it. Now what is it? And you guys probably are telling me because you know who it is. The Modernist Colorist. I knew I knew it. And he streams live quite a bit. I think, I think his are all lives, aren't they? I'm not able to catch a lot of the lives. That sounded funny, didn't it? <laughs> I can't catch lives. I uh, can't make it to a lot of the live recordings, live streams, um, because many of them are during the day, or I think it's Mays who are who's a really early in the morning. I would really like to catch more of Dee Dee's. Hers are so interesting and she is so funny. She never fails to make me laugh. And she streams on Mondays and Wednesdays and sometimes even on Fridays then too. But again, it's during the day. I can sometimes catch the beginning of hers because they start before Maddie gets here. So I will try to join in. Matter of fact, she probably will be streaming shortly today with it being a Wednesday. And then Steve and Jennifer stay stream and they start on Facebook and then finish it on the YouTube channel. So that for those of you who aren't on Facebook, you can 
see them on YouTube. And for those of you who don't watch YouTube much, you can see them on Facebook. So I think with them splitting it between the two social platforms, that's a very, very smart idea. I don't always catch them either, but... So are we figuring out what this picture is yet? And I know we're zoomed in, so it's kind of hard to see. I can start to see what it is. Is my hand in the way as I'm coloring today? I moved the arm well, the whole thing, the clamp and everything over on my desk today before I started recording because where I am sitting here, I was having to stretch the arm that holds my phone up above me. I was having to stretch it out so far and I thought, well, why don't you, you dummy, move <laughs> where it's clamped onto my desk a little bit farther to the right, and then I won't have to stretch the bar out so far to so my phone is right overhead. I don't want to move it over too far or it's going to get in my way when I sit at my desk, but this desk is quite wide, so I knew I could move it over some, and I may depending on how this works now, because the arm is still kind of stretched out a ways, but if I bring it over much more, even now my head is kind of hitting the bar that's coming over and holding the phone. So it's, I can't lean right over the top of my page to color, which I don't like. So I am kind of viewing this from back a little bit farther, which for this type of coloring is not a big deal, but when I get into, say, using my colored pencils or when I start using my pan pastels, I am gonna wanna maybe be a little bit closer I am so used, you know, I'm not used to coloring on a desk at all. As I've said many times in the past, I curl up in my chair in the living room and I color that way. <laughs> I do not color on a flat surface like a lot of you do. So I'm not used to having my book flat on a desk or on a table. So this is very different for me and because I have in my left eye I have this does anybody have floaters in their eyes most of us do and I have always had a lot of floaters in my eyes a lot of the the smaller black ones some of them would be a little bit bigger but yeah I've always had a lot of them well, last year, and I went to the eye doctor for this because I was quite concerned, um, all of a sudden I got this great big, like a, I don't know how to describe it, a blob <laughs> in my left eye that was distorting my vision. It would get in the way just like a floater would, but this one was not black like all the other floaters. It did, however, move with my eye, just like the floater. So if I would look to the left, it would move to the right, and vice versa. If I looked up, then it would move down, like my other floaters do. Only this thing is big and really gets in my way and irritates me, especially if it's bright outside and I am either driving or 
you know, just walking around outside, whatever, it seems to affect me more, bother me more. So I did go in to the doctor. I didn't, I knew I had cataracts forming, but they, they are not that bad yet. So, you know, they're going to leave, leave them alone for a while started forming a couple years ago and they're still not that bad so but I wanted to make sure that this you know wasn't something worse like a detached retina or which happened to my sister so and she had to have surgery for it so I just wanted to make sure it wasn't something more serious and no it is just a very large floater. It's a different type of floater, I guess. I don't know. Or in a different location, because all floaters are actually in the back of your eye, in the vitreous fluid of your eye. So they really can't do much about them, other than if they get really, really bad. I guess they can remove, they can go in and remove that fluid that is in your eyeball and they replace it with like a, a saline type of solution, I, I think. And so as they remove all that vitreous fluid, the floaters, the little pieces of, I believe they're little pieces of protein or something those are all removed too. Well, I am definitely not going through that. Yes, these floaters are annoying as hell. <laughs> Pardon my language. But there, it's not worth going through that. Plus, I can't imagine how much that would cost to have something like that done. And the other floaters, yeah, like I said, they're annoying, but they didn't bother me so much. It's this big one now in my left eye and I notice it when I am trying to color from this distance more than when I color closer up in my lap. But we will do what we can do. I am still seeing well enough where I think I'm staying in the lines. <laughs> It's still forming a picture, so can't be too bad. Slow but sure, we are getting a picture. How many of you guys, there we go with the guys again, how many of you do either color by number pictures or mosaic type of pictures, pictures like this? I know Sun Life Drawing has a ton of these, but there are other artists, other companies, whatever you want to call them, that have these type of books, too. Has anybody done the Spiroglyphics books? I love those. And I think they're coming out with another one this year. And I will probably get that one. They're a lot of fun. Those are, they look almost like a record going round and round and round. And you just color in that line as it spirals out. And it, like this, makes a picture that you cannot see until you color it in. And yeah, it's called Spiroglyphics. And they are on Amazon. I really like them. The only problem with those is they have very thin light lines. So it gets very hard, even with gel pen. And I think gel pen is the easiest thing around to color with. Maybe it's just because I'm so used to them, but um, even with gel pen, it it's difficult to stay in the lines but you know in the end it's not that big of a deal when you look at that picture 
from farther away. You don't see that. And that's what I always tell myself. Yeah, I may have to move this arm for this camera back over where it was because I am trying to duck <laughs> under the arm here to color. And it's getting a little difficult. So we'll see. I'll do some experimenting this weekend and see what setup is going to work better. Can't really clamp it to the front of my desk because I have that overhead storage up ahead and this would not fit under there. So I can't put it to the right of me because I'm right-handed and you guys would not see anything then. I have to keep it on the left side. So yeah, I'll just do some playing. I once thought about using a selfie stick and just putting it up above, you know, sticking out from maybe under some heavy books or something on my overhead storage area and then it wouldn't be in my way at all. But then I probably would be sticking my big head over the, <laughs> over the book to uh, see clearly to color and I'd still be in your way. So I don't know, like I said, I'll do some playing around. I do like what I have over here now to record. It really works well for me. Um, except for, yeah, it gets a little in the way. It's not like I can't see it all, but I just can't get quite as close with my head as I would like. I'm getting quiet. Hmm. I'm trying to think what I'm all going to be coloring now this next month, seeing as how Sun Life Drawing is coming to an end. And I know I'm going to be coloring a lot of mandalas. There is a collaboration, collaboration, between Anne of A Colorful Life and Michelle from Color Chats and Cats with Michelle and one other gal, and I can't think who it was. Sorry. <laughs> um, they are, are all having mandala mania i believe is what it's called mandala mania 2019 or 2019 mandala mania i can't remember um so i know i'm going to be doing quite a few mandalas seeing as how i have just a few mandala books <laughs> So I hope many of you join in with coloring mandalas, if that is your thing. And then there is also, I can't remember exactly the name of that one either. I think it's Marker Madness. Is it John that's hosting that one? I cannot, I'm not sure. But I thought, oh, those two go hand in hand so I probably will do be doing a lot of mandalas with marker 
and I love doing mandalas with marker anyhow, so that works out great. Wonder if they got in cahoots when they planned this. I don't think so, but it does work well together. They kind of go hand in hand. Okay, the news is on yet, so I know it's not nine yet. <laughs> like I said, Maddie comes at 9.30 or somewhere thereabouts, so I have to have all my equipment put away before then so she can't get at it. Because, yeah, a lot of this stuff would entice a two-year-old their curiosity because they are definitely curious little creatures at that point in time, aren't they? Did I just call my granddaughter a creature? That was a very nice grandma. <laughs> ah. Yes, it is now light out. Bella had me up at quarter after five this morning, so it's going to be a long day today. I'm usually up by six-ish anyhow, so it's not like it was really early. First she was awake at, I think it was 4.30, and I'm like, oh, no, baby girl, we're not getting up yet. Come lay back down. And she did. She laid back down next to me. And, uh, but, yeah, then by a little after five, she's like, okay, I laid down like you said. Now let's get up. I have to go potty. <laughs> So we got up. She is my alarm clock. And I am definitely not a morning person. I mean, yes, I do get up early in the morning now, which is something I used to never do. But I am not, I don't move real fast in the morning. My brain is kind of foggy and uh, takes me a while to wake up. And when I forgot which antidepressant it was, but I slept very late. I would be in bed. Well, I was even more of a night owl then than I am now. I would be up till three, four in the morning. But yeah, I would sleep till noon. And uh, so I kinda had my days and nights mixed up. And yeah. Then I started working part-time, so I had to start getting up early and that was very difficult for me that was a really hard transition so and ever since then I've kind of been transitioned now to getting up earlier in the morning I very very rarely if ever sleep beyond seven even on the weekends if bella goes in and sleeps with bob on the weekend once in a while um i may sleep till six thirty, seven o'clock and now for me that's sleeping in <laughs> that's getting like an hour extra sleep now last night i only got like well, probably five, five and a half hours of sleep. So yeah, it's gonna kind of be a long day. 
This is getting kind of bright. Okay, I am back. Wasn't very long for you, but it is no longer morning here. It was 9 o'clock by the time I had stopped this this morning. And so I figured I was going to wait till tonight to finish this picture, seeing as how I would have only had a half hour remaining by the time um, I would have started it and Maddie would be coming. So I just thought I would figure this or finish this color along tonight and then hopefully publish this yet tonight, get it up for you guys. Okay, that should be close enough. Seeing as how tomorrow is the last day of the month, I kind of wanted to get this out tonight and get my end of the month videos recorded too which will include my pictures that I colored for the month of February and then my February book haul, my coloring book haul. I won't be including the coloring supplies that I got in February because I think I made videos on the things, the coloring supplies that I got, like the Shuttle Art Fine Liners. I didn't get a whole lot of supplies during the month of February, so I am just going to be showing the coloring books that I got. And I can't remember, but I probably mentioned that this morning already kind of forgot now what I all talked about in this morning's video and so I may repeat myself tonight in this continuation so I apologize in advance if you have heard anything that I say in this second part of this color along Still the first part for you, but for me, it's kind of a second part. <laughs> like I said, I want to just, rather than putting this color along into two parts, I'm just going to have it as one long color along. And then if you wish to not watch it all at once and split it up, that would be your option. Like I mentioned this morning, I like long color alongs. So, I thought maybe some of you liked it too. Maybe we'll keep this up. I noticed when I watched back just a little bit of this morning's video because I can't see real close on my page that I was missing like the top part of a lot of my circles. <laughs> oh man. Like I said, I'm used to seeing my book up close when I am coloring so this is quite different for me coloring this way. Do all of you color at a desk or the table? I know most of the videos that I have seen have been at, you have a specific coloring desk that you color at. Do any of you color in bed? That is something I have never done. I do not do anything in bed other than sleep. <laughs> I don't go on my phone in bed or the iPad or anything like that. I do all of that out in the living room in my chair. I just find it uncomfortable 
you know, sitting up in bed or laying in bed doing any of that. So I don't do it. But I know a lot of people do. I know a lot of people actually diamond paint in bed. And that is something I would never even think of doing because <laughs> I would be so afraid of dumping my tray of diamonds all over and then having all of them all over in my bed. To me, that's kind of dangerous to do. <laughs> So yeah, don't do anything like that. But like I said, I do hear of other people that get lap desks and do things like that in their bed. Or some of you color at your dining room table. And I do too, do many things at my dining room table, like setting up my diamond paintings and when I am sometimes coloring in my color charts and whatnot, it is just easier to do it at the dining room table so I can spread things out more where I cannot do that in my chair. I know some people color on their couch too. They have that, what is it called? That cart. I know Michael's has a knockoff of it. Where does the other one come from? Ikea? I think. Roscog cart? Is that, I don't know if that's right. I could have that totally wrong. But I, I have heard of some that wheel that cart or some other wheeled cart over to their couch and they color on the couch and then they can easily roll that cart back out of the way that contains all of their coloring supplies on so that's that's a neat idea I just have everything in my dining room. So I have to remember that when I get to the point where I am going to be coloring with pencil or some of my miscellaneous supplies like my pan pastels that I have to bring everything to my desk because all of a sudden I will want, let's say, an eraser or a blender pencil or sharpener or maybe baby wipes or I mean who knows paper towels if I'm doing something with watercoloring I have to remember to bring all of that to my desk or I'd have to pause the video go into the dining room <laughs> so I have kind of been writing up a list of things that I should have at my desk some things I have duplicates of so I could just leave those at my desk here and then if I need anything while I am coloring in the other room I would have another one like blender pencils or blender markers Things like that. I have a question for you. Um, how many of you that have, well in particular colored pencils, how many of you take your colored pencils out of the tins and put them into pencil cases and if you do do you keep the pencil tins or do you throw them away I have been keeping all of my tins all my containers that my pencils, in particular my pencils, 
I'm trying to think of the containers that some of my markers have come in and whether I kept them. I think a lot of the time the markers come in those um, those black fabric type of bags with a handle on the top. And I know my Cali Arts came in that and the Sioux Color markers came in that. And those I do not keep. And I'm, I know the Color It, of course, all come in their own nice case. So, of course, those I keep. But, so I think it's pretty much the pencils. Those that came in the tins. Holbein's, of course, came in the cardboard, whoops, cardboard box. And I have kept that, too. I just, I have not been able to bring myself to throw them out. But they're just taking up an entire filing cabinet drawer and they're just sitting there. I mean, I do not know why I am hanging on to them. So I was just wondering what the rest of you do. Do you keep them? Have you th thrown them all out? I don't know the reasoning why I am keeping them because I know I am never going to be putting my pencils back in there and I can't see why I would use those tins for any other supplies. So again, I don't know what I am hanging on to them for <laughs> because I'm a pack rat. I am not a hoarder, but I can be a pack rat. I used to be a lot worse though. I'm much better now. I do throw out a lot. Bob, on the other hand, he's in the other room, so I can't say it too loud. <laughs> he likes to hang on to everything. Because you might need it in the future for something. So, which I guess can be true. He is a fixer, so a lot of times he finds uses for things that... You and I wouldn't even think of. Let's see. I'm going to have to. Okay. We will move this up here. Where am I? Holy cow. Way up there. I am going to have to move the phone up because otherwise I am not going to be able to color this. No, we got to move it back this way. Boy, I am doing real well tonight. It's still way up. Let's move it way down here. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have to really adjust my phone here. Because otherwise the book is halfway up my desk and I really can't see. Then... I'm having a hard enough time seeing because I am way back here. How did I do this this morning? Because if I, yeah, if I move this down closer to me, and if I move this up, yeah, I gotta, I gotta push it up even further. So I don't know how. I did this this morning. Hmm, interesting. There, maybe I'll do it this way and try to get underneath without getting my head in the way. Like I said, I gotta figure out a better way of recording when I am going to be bringing my pencils 
in and pan pastels and things like that. This may not be colored the neatest because I am quite a distance away. So, yeah, I was just wondering if other people keep their tins. I could really use that filing cabinet space, but I don't know. Like I said, it's just, it's kind of hard for me to throw them out. They are such nice tins, but not to keep the pencils in, that's for sure. Especially when they're nice tins, but they have those flimsy trays. Even the Holbeins. You know, you pay such a premium price for those pencils. And number one, they come in a cardboard case. Now, granted, it is a heavy-duty cardboard but, like I said, for the price you pay for those pencils, you would think that they would come in an awesome case with awesome trays. Kind of like the Karen Dosh does. Because these pencils cost more than the Karen Dosh. So yeah, I may be tossing all my tins and it's going to be hard to do. I am totally off screen, ain't I? Well, what the heck? Where am I? I am just totally lost here. Is that, that's why. Okay, let's move it this way. That's why it was so hard. I have been totally off screen. Ah, that's why it was so hard, okay. Is Lisa tired? Yes, Lisa's tired. <laughs> I think I said this morning that Bella had me up at a little after five, and I went to bed at last night at like 12.30, so yes, Lisa's a little tired, but like I said, I want to get this recording done tonight, and see if tomorrow morning then I can get one of my end of the month videos made or possibly oh well, I probably could get both of them made because they won't be that long not as long as a color along or color and chat so the showing of my book haul from February won't take that long and Showing what I completed in February won't take that long. I think I accidentally put some of my books that I colored out of back on the bookcase. I'm just, I'm not used to putting them on. Oh, I hate it when I do that. I'm not used to putting them on a stack when I have finished a page and bookmarking them. So, I have to get in that habit of doing that. Boy, I am warm tonight and I don't know why. I have been so cold lately, so I, I had been wearing just a t-shirt under my sweatshirt and then I just take my sweatshirt off at night 
and sleep in my t-shirt, but I have been so cold again lately that I have my thermal undershirt on under my sweatshirt, and then I sleep in that, and uh, crawling under my, I don't have just flannel sheets, I have fleece sheets on my bed, and they're so soft and cozy. I love them because it's not cold crawling into your bed at night, whereas regular sheets are pretty chilly. They're kind of cold to crawl into, so. So yeah, I like these fleece sheets. And, but boy, I don't know. Tonight I am warm. Big switch for me. By this weekend, I think I will definitely be needing this thermal undershirt. We could break records again this weekend, especially by Sunday. And Sunday night is just supposed to be Though our wind chills are supposed to be in the 30 to 40 below zero again area. It's like, oh my heavens, our averages are supposed to be up in the 30s. We are so far below normal. It's ridiculous. Everybody's getting really sick of winter. And the meteorological spring is in a few weeks. And it's like, yeah, send that note on to Mother Nature, please. So that she knows, too. Something tells me we're going to have a late spring the way this winter is going. Winter started out late, but boy, it has made up for it. Survivor is on right now, and I dislike that show. I think a lot of it is hokey. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Kind of shaky tonight, as you can probably see. So, it's a little bit harder for me to color neatly and zip along. Sometimes I'm worse than others. And I don't know why. Any amount of sugar seems to have an effect on me. And I am not diabetic at all, but I did have a bowl of cereal earlier. So I don't know if that is having an effect on me or not. I, If I have anything with a high sugar content, of course your blood sugar spikes for a little while and then mine kind of plummets and so then I get yeah real low blood sugar and I start shaking and I do get really hot and I just feel funny so I have to have either a small candy bar or even a piece of toast or just just to get something in my stomach and that usually helps. So I could just be on the kind of the low side of blood sugar. Doesn't seem real bad, but that might be some of my shaking right now. I didn't feel it at all when I sat down to record this. <laughs> Figures, right?
So Maddie was just picked up a little while ago. Well, Maddie and Jaden at about seven. So it is a little after seven on Wednesday night now. And so I thought I would pop in here by my desk and record the rest of this so I can get it in the editor and do all that I have to do and get it up onto YouTube yet tonight. We will see if that happens. <laughs> no guarantees. I did record this morning the winner of the 500 subscriber giveaway. She has not contacted me yet. Oh, I forgot to state in that video that she's got a week. Mm. Joan, you have a week to get a hold of me. <laughs> if she hasn't seen that video yet, I'm sure she is not seeing this video either. But one way or another, if she hasn't contacted me by this end of this weekend, I will get a hold of her somehow. One way or another. I am doing so well with my subscriber count. I just, I cannot believe it. You guys are awesome. I think I am up to already. I mean, I just gave away my 500 subscriber prize and I am up to around 650 now. So I only have 100 more to go and I'll be able to do my 750 giveaway. I mean, I am just amazed how fast that my channel is growing. It makes me so happy. Thank you guys so much. It means so much to me. And like I said, I love reading all of your comments and replying back to you guys. This coloring community as a whole is so awesome, so supportive, not just of us YouTubers, but of each other. You help each other out on Facebook too. It's, it's for the most part, very awesome, very supportive. You do always get those, those few, and there aren't very many, but there are a few that do like to create drama. And no matter where you go, you get those kind of people, though. So, not just in the coloring community, you get it in every group. I know in some of the diamond painting groups, you will always get a few of those, too. So, I guess that's just par for the horse, and then that person is dealt with, and hopefully the problem is resolved. With it being at night, I am trying out my new desk light, so I hope the lighting is okay. It's not as harsh using this lamp as the lighting that is under my desk. That lighting is a very bright white, which is probably fine in an office setting, which this desk is Four. It is an office desk, and that's why it is so big. But 
I think for recording, it's a little harsh and a little bright. So let me know in the comments below how you think this type of lighting, because there are different types and I think I showed this. So this is a bright white and I think that's way too harsh. Then you have this, but I think this is kind of a little bit better. It doesn't seem so harsh. So let me know if you think too that you prefer this one. And I don't have it up super bright because, again, I think it just, especially when I'm coloring with these glitter gel pens, I was afraid it would shine too bright. And it would not look good in a recording. Okay, shakiness, go away. Go away, go away. It's bad enough when I get this and I'm not recording, but it's worse when I am. I've never had this happen this bad when I was recording, when I was coloring. So again, I apologize. There's not a lot I can do. It should go away. Kind of quiet tonight, ain't I? I think I talked so much this morning, I ran out of things to talk about. <laughs> Other than the weather, that's always an ongoing thing, but I think you guys are sick and tired of hearing me talk about the weather. <sighs> Maddie was really goofy today. Oh, God, I laughed at her so hard. Just being really silly. She had brought along some little figurines. It was, she's a big Minnie Mouse nut. She just loves Minnie Mouse. So for Christmas, Santa Claus brought her some little figurines, little plastic figurines. And it was Mickey and Minnie and Pluto and I think Donald Duck is in there too. And so she was playing with them on her little trampoline. And they were talking back and forth. And so she she was playing so cute this morning. I had to sit and watch her when she didn't know I was watching her. And it was so adorable. I just thought it was so cute. Or she'll sit, she has a, a play kitchen that Heather brought down for her down here and play dishes and stuff. And the other day she was playing with them and just jabbering away and singing. She would be singing while she was sitting there playing. Oh, it was just adorable. Those are the moments that you must remember when they're being so naughty. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's like, okay, yes, you can be an adorable little girl, too. It's not all bad. And God made them that way, right? So that we could put up with the other moments. Kids will definitely be kids, right? That's why I always say hats off to you mothers or dads that are full-time moms or dads and you stay home with your children because that is probably one of the hardest jobs out there. And I do not envy you. My 
I had mentioned earlier in this video of Sun Life Drawing coming out with their new book. So I am excited for that. Can't wait to see what it looks like because it sounds, like I said, it, it sounds very different than these types of books. They do have a couple of other books out there. They do have a Chibi's book and they do have some that are almost, you know, geared towards children. I think one is, what was it called? Cars, trucks, or I don't know, and automobiles, or I don't know. I can't really remember. I think Zoe was actually coloring out of it. Um, I think she put up a video earlier this week coloring out of that one. So, I don't know if this book is going to be along those lines. Almost sounds like it. It sounds like it's going to be more of a regular, you know, a book with regular drawn pictures. Rather than these design pictures. One color designs or their mosaic books. Color by number. Doesn't sound like this is going to be anything like those so yeah I'm real curious so hopefully within the next couple of weeks we will see that one and I will then be able to do another giveaway been having a lot of giveaways haven't I I love doing that <laughs> love giving out things to you guys You guys all make my day. I love recording these videos and chatting with you guys. Sometimes I may have a hard time coming up with things to talk about, but and then other times one subject just kind of leads into another and another. Which is what I like, because then I can just jabber on and on and on, and I don't run out of things to talk about. I hope everybody is having a great evening. It is hump day. So only a couple more days left of the work week for those of you that don't work weekends. <laughs> Tomorrow is the last day of my work week. So I am hoping to get a number of videos made on Friday. I would really like to get at least the second part of the Diamond Painting mini-series done. If not, I think it's only going to be three, three videos. So I can possibly get the second and the third one done. And then I may periodically have a <clears throat> Excuse me. A what we call a drill with me. A diamond painting and chat. Occasionally. I won't do it all the time because I know not all of you are into diamond painting, but even if you're not, you can still just color or do whatever crafts you like to do. I know. A lot of us colorists are crafty people and we do lots of other crafts. And if so, what type of crafts do you do? Are you into scrapbooking 
or card making. I know I've heard that a lot of you crochet or knit. Those are two things I have never gotten into. My mom years ago tried to teach me how to knit and I just could not get it. <laughs> I would get so frustrated. I was kind of young and I would just end up throwing the needles in the air and on the floor. It's like, nope, cannot do this. So after a couple of attempts, it's like, nope, I'm not going to frustrate myself anymore. And I never picked up knitting needles again. <laughs> and I never did get into crocheting. The thing that I did a lot was needlepoint. And I think I mentioned this in a past video. I did um, a couple of Clooney tapestries, which if you've never heard of them, they are these great big tapestries from over in England, and they are extremely detailed with tons and tons of itty bitty little flowers in the background. And so that's what's in these needlepoint pictures too. And so they take a long time to do. The first two that I did were done with yarn, which the majority of needlepoint kits are. But this one that I have probably three quarters done and I have not even looked at in a few years, it is done with floss well with you know the DMC thread floss and so the stitches are much much smaller the canvas is much much tinier as you can imagine and yeah so it but it is absolutely gorgeous and I really, really should work on those because I have a whole nother kit that I bought and those things are not cheap. But I cannot see myself picking that back up because between coloring and diamond painting and now YouTube, that is taking up all of my time. Like I said, I have not even taken the time to diamond paint much in the past few weeks. I think I did a little bit last weekend. And my weekends used to be dedicated strictly to, I did not color on the weekends. Colored during the week. But my weekends were dedicated to diamond painting. Now they're kind of dedicated to making my videos and editing. And, but I have been making a lot of videos and uploading videos pretty much every day, if not multiple ones every day. So I may slow down on that. I, I know most... YouTubers did not put up that many videos. They typically do not upload a video every day, much less multiple videos. So, yeah. <clears throat> that may give me time to do other things then. Get at my pretty diamond painting. Because I do want to get that big waterfall done. Almost on the bottom row. 
Now it is a very wide diamond painting, so even though I'm on the bottom row, it is still going to take quite a while to finish that, especially at the rate I'm going. I had it like three quarters done when I started working on some other ones the beginning of October because there was a diamond painting challenge out there that ran from October 1st to the end of the year. And so I was working on these other diamond paintings for that challenge so my big waterfall kind of got pushed to the side for a while. And then the first of the year, well, when I got that last one done from the challenge, so it was probably, I don't know, the second week in January or so, I got back out this waterfall diamond painting. And yeah, I mean, I, I am farther on it definitely than what I was, but... I should be pretty much done with it by now. <laughs> and I'm not. Oh well. It is not a race. Just like coloring. You go at the pace you want. And shouldn't rush through it. I always seem to be in a hurry when... I color and when I diamond paint and I don't know why I don't know why I feel like I have to rush through everything especially when using colored pencils I wish I could just make myself slow down and just take my time on a picture Anybody else have that problem where you're kind of impatient to get the picture done? Because <laughs> I sure am. And I envy those of you who can just color slowly and enjoy the process. And So, I kind of want to work on that, too. But it's hard to force yourself to slow down when you're always in a hurry-up mode. I seen out on Amazon that they now have not just the 50 and not just the 100, but they now have a 120 pack of Crayola pencils. Has anybody else seen those? I can't remember how much they were. But I'm like, holy cow, I remember once upon a time when they only had the 50 set, and I thought that was a big set. And then they came out with the 100 set, and I'm like, holy cow. And now they came out with the 120 set, so it's like, wow, they have as much as the Faber-Castell polychromos. Now, of course, they're not quite the quality that the polychromos is, but for the price, they're actually not that bad of pencils. I think they have really upped their game from back in the day when the Crayola pencils were really just geared towards the students, towards kids. I think since they've discovered that a lot of us adult colorists 
used them too. I think that they have made their pencils better. I don't remember them being this good when I colored with them as a kid. Of course, that was a long time ago. But I did color with colored pencil and crayons a lot. Especially, I, I know I mentioned this in a past video, I did not play with Barbie dolls when I was a kid. I played with paper dolls. And I would sit for hours upon hours in my bedroom and designing all their clothes and cutting them out, you know, and you got to make the little tabs so you can fold them over on their shoulders and whatnot so the clothes stay on them. Even then, I had to come up with color schemes and, you know, things like that. So, yes, I was a designer back then. <laughs> and some of you younger people probably have not even heard of paper dolls. <laughs> back in my day, they were pretty popular. Just like the light bright, I don't think you see them too much anymore either. We used to play with the light break a lot. And the spirograph. Anybody remember those back in the day? I know spirograph is still kind of around, but they're a lot, lot fancier now. We didn't have the fancy spirographs that they have out now. You know, if a person would have only kept some of those toys from your childhood, the amount of money that some of those things are worth now is just unreal. Bob likes to watch American Pickers on TV. Has anybody watched that show? They're really funny. But they collect they go around the country and they collect old stuff and they resell it basically is the premise of the show and oh my heavens the stuff that they find and this guy's partner that typically goes with them out on these trips if you want to call them that these hunts <laughs> is really into the antique toys. And when you see some of the stuff that he gets, that he picks up, and what they're worth, and then what they turn around and sell these things for, it's like, holy cow, I had that when I was a kid. That's how much that would be worth now. And like some of these beanie babies, you know, it wasn't that long ago that, that those, you know, were really popular. And some of those are really worth money, especially if they're like new and they still have their tags on. I had a bunch of beanie babies, but they are not like new and they do not have their tags on. My kids, when they were younger, they used to take this woven basket in the living room. They would stand on the other side of the living room and toss my whole collection of BB, BB, beanie babies one at a time across the living room and see between Cameron and Mallory, who could get the most in the basket? <laughs> uh, it's nice that they played together, though. They're two years apart. So, yes, 
At times, they fought like cats and dogs, like all siblings do. But they're very close now. Mallory stood up for Cameron's wedding when he got married a couple years ago, and I imagine Cameron will stand up for her wedding. She is engaged now, and her fiancé, she met him through Cameron because he was Cameron's best friend. <laughs> so Cameron was not exactly thrilled at the beginning of that relationship. But he's kind of gotten over it now. And so he had him and Mallory stand up together for his wedding. And because Leah, his now wife, had so many girlfriends, it was hard for her to pick out who was going to stand up for her wedding. She knew who her maid of honor was going to be. And Cameron, too. He has so many friends that it was really hard for him to pick out who was going to stand up. He didn't want to offend anybody that he didn't pick and have somebody mad at him. But between here and both him and Leah went to the University of Green Bay for their four-year degrees. So they had friends here in Marathon plus a bunch of friends over in Green Bay from when they went to college there. So yeah, they have friends all over. And they will make trips to Green Bay quite often to go out with their friends from there. So they keep in touch with them too. Especially in summertime, because they do a lot of that uh, frisbee golf. I have never attempted that, and I don't think I would be very <laughs> good at it, because I am not good at throwing a frisbee. And you definitely need to be accurate with that thing in order to play frisbee golf. Cameron and Leah play it quite a bit. That's getting to be more and more popular every summer. And we do have a golf course, if you want to call it that. I guess it is. Um, that is for Frisbee golf now. And they do pretty well, I guess. It is more of a young person's type of golf. <laughs> Whereas the other golf kind of is popular with all ages. Cameron used to golf quite a bit, regular golf. The only golfing I have done in the past and not for a long time is the miniature golfing. <laughs> And I wasn't even very good at that. I cannot imagine doing regular golf. I think my club, <laughs> I'd, I'd hit the ground and dig up the ground more than I'd hit the ball. <laughs> I don't do a lot of sports. I've never been good at sports. Didn't really play sports or get into any of that in high school either. I was more into music. I was in the band and the chorus. I played many instruments in band wherever they needed me. 
I started out on flute and played piccolo, then went to the oboe, but then I was in the clarinet choir and I played bass and then contrabass, which is the great big bass clarinet. And then in the, what was it called? Swing band or something like that. I played the Barry sax, which is the great big saxophone. And I even played valve trombone, which a lot of people have probably never even seen. It is a trombone that does not have a slide on it. It is just with three valves, kind of like a trumpet. And you play the trombone like that. So I helped out the brass for some songs where they needed more brass. So yeah, I, I played a lot of different instruments. And matter of fact, my first job that I had at an insurance company, they had a band and a choir. And every fall we would put on this great big production. It was like a musical. And we would be down in the pit area. It was in big theater in Wausau. It's called the Grand Theater. And so they had a pit and that's where uh, our band would be and every Tuesday we had our band rehearsals and so we'd all get together and practice and we would play at other gigs too when we had like the Badger State Summer Games and winter games, we would perform for that. And, you know, there were other events that we would play at. We even went down to some of the Brewer games. I can't remember what we, what we actually played for down there. Ah, oh, don't you know. That was kind of long ago, too. <laughs> then Wassa had a community band. I never did get into that. I was asked to join the Wassa Symphony when I played oboe. And due to scheduling problems, I just couldn't do that, but I loved symphony music and I just loved playing it on the oboe. So that would have been a lot of fun. But just did not work out. So I've always been musical and not athletic. Nope. My kids weren't really into sports either. Cameron for a while played football. He played it in sixth, seventh, eighth, and then a little bit of ninth. But he just was not aggressive enough to play football. And Mallory, too, she played basketball and volleyball for a while. But her, too, she would prefer not getting the ball. <laughs> I think she just liked being on the team for the sake of being on the team. All right. And so, yeah, you could tell she would be on the outside of the basketball court, I think, kind of hoping they wouldn't throw the ball to her. <laughs> Same with volleyball. But in high school, then she was a cheerleader. 
and she was also in flag corps so she did get involved in high school activities she always had to go to all the football games and the basketball games and she really enjoyed that would be practicing out here for the flag corps with her flag all the time so of course she was in all the parades around here so we always had to go to the parades especially the marathon fun days here in town because we're only a block and a half away from Main Street so we would just walk up there and put our chairs down and everybody would have their chairs out by like six o'clock in the morning and the parade's not until one o'clock in the afternoon. And it would get very crowded. And those of you from the city that don't know us country folk, <laughs> would find it very strange to see all these tractors coming down Main Street, <laughs> pulling the floats and yeah, that's how we roll around here. <laughs> There's even a specific day for high schoolers. I don't even remember what they call it, but they drive their tractors to school. <laughs> And it's not called Tractor Day. I can't remember what it's called. I think it's near the end of the school year. And yeah, they drive their tractors to school. I don't know what they do if they live way out in the country. Though. That would take a long time to get to school. I mean, those tractors don't go that fast. would take you like three times as long to get there. If not more. Oh, the days when my kids were still in school. And now they're all gone. And there's goods and bads to that. Cameron would, he is such a jokester. He is so funny. He would make me laugh every day. So that I definitely missed. And after he graduated from college in Green Bay, before him and Leah got their own place, he moved back in here for a few months. So I had my jokester back for a while. <laughs> and then he moved out again. And it's so funny to see him and Leah together because my son is about 6'3". We are very tall in my family. My brother is 6'3", I believe. My dad was 6'2". So we're all relatively tall. I'm 5'8". My oldest sister is 5'10". My niece is six foot. <laughs> so we do have the tall gene in our family. And Leah, I think, is 5'2", if I'm not mistaken. Very small, very petite. So it's really funny watching those two together, like for their wedding to watch them dance together. She's got to reach up so far and Cameron still bends over or like for her to give him a kiss or something. It's, it's so cute. Those two are just so cute together. She's a doll. I couldn't ask for a better daughter-in-law. Now we're waiting for those two to have kids. <laughs> They've been married about two and a half years. 
so we'll see when we are almost done here. There we go. And it's only an hour and ten minutes later. I didn't think this was going to take that long to finish this. So, I doubt whether I'm going to be able to zoom you back out because my remote is going to have turned off. Oh, there we go. I got it to work. Okay. Here is our picture. Now you can see what it is, huh? It is a seagull. Isn't that neat? I just, I love how these pictures come together like this. All you're doing is coloring in all these circles, or in some of the books, you're coloring in hexagons or squares, and then they make a picture. Or some of them just have lines. That's my favorite. I love doing the lines. They, to me, are the easiest of all of the books. So if you ever want a totally easy, stress-free book to do, yeah, look for the lines book. So, that is our color along for the end of the month for Sun Life Drawing. Again, this was a collaboration between myself, uh, Color Creatively, and Zoe Archer. I will link their channels down below. I will link this book. And I will link the uh, Color Technique um, uh, glitter gel pens and the refill sets. I can't believe I did not go through an entire gel pen. I was thinking ahead and did bring the refill, and I didn't need it. Wow. These pens, the Color Technique pens, do last quite a while. I, I do like them. So, that is it for this book. I, I imagine I will be coloring other Sun Life pictures, you know, throughout the rest of the year. But not near as many as what I was doing for this month, with this month being dedicated to them. As soon as I do get their newest book, I will be doing a flip through of that. And then we will be doing the giveaway of that book so stay tuned for that sometime within the next couple of weeks it sounded like it may be probably like two weeks out a good two weeks out um so probably within sometime in the second week of march maybe um i'll see if he you know he usually keeps in touch with me and kind of lets me know what's up so we will have that to look forward to. We will have the 750 subscriber giveaway to look forward to. I'm only about 100 away. Um, so we have that to look forward to, too. So lots of good things coming up. Again, tomorrow I'm going to be recording my uh, February book haul and what I colored in February. So those two videos should be up shortly also. So, I hope you enjoyed this color and chat. It, or color along, I guess you would call this. Um, I hope that uh, you enjoyed this whole month of Sun Life drawing. Um, and that uh, some of you picked up some new books that you kind of maybe didn't color this style before. But you kind of see now that, well, maybe it could be your thing. You know, just a real stress-free type of coloring when you don't feel like doing any detailed work. That's kind of why I like them. So, if you did enjoy this video, it was a long color along. <laughs> Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And hit that bell so you are notified when I put up other videos. I hope everyone has a terrific and a rest of the evening and rest of the week. And as always, happy coloring.